Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, <laughs> episode number 143. You know what that, my, my, oh, I like 143. You know what, Th- this should have been on February 14th, because 143 means... I love it's you. It's I love you. Yeah. That my my girlfriend back in the day at Purdue would write me notes and write one four three secret code. Mm. Unbelievable. She still writes me one four three. It's so nice. But today we're talking about what? Today we are talking about five steps to avoid budget busting expenses. So, and how it's time to update your cues. Yeah, your known upcoming expenses. So five steps to avoid budget busting expenses, mm-hmm. and and it is the last last Monday in March. In a couple of days or so, I'm going to have yeah. a birthday, and it's going to be unbelievable. No fooling, and it's very exciting. So we're super excited about talking about five steps to avoid budget busting expenses. Read the question that kind of yep. prompted us to do this episode. Yes. Yeah, so our question is: Have you ever had a surprise expense that blew up your budget? I think we could all say yes to that. Yes. <laughs> Well, we can't eliminate surprise expenses from showing up, but we can prepare for them financially so that they don't destroy your budget. In today's episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast, we're going to talk about five steps that you can take to prevent surprise expenses from blindsiding you and derailing you on your way to a fully funded life. Yes, that's awesome. And this this is going to be interesting because we've talked about saving for known upcoming non-monthly expenses, Christmas, vacations, you know, special days. But, and we have a calculator for that. This is a little, this is going to be a different thing on that, on how to avoid having those type of expenses, the ones you didn't plan for, even though you may have known they were coming, but you just forgot how to prevent them from blowing up your budget. So before we do that, we're going to have one of my favorite sections of the podcast. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip Podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. All right, for today's current money events section, current money events section, current money events section. Isn't that awesome? I don't know. I said I was going to wrap it here a few episodes ago. I'd, so I'd, that's my new career. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this part. But today I'm talking about investing apps. I, I, Joe doesn't know how to wrap. Is that awesome? We're going to make <laughs> that into terrible. like a meme or something. I'm ready to take a Do nap. That. <laughs> this episode is really sap. Being my energy. No, uh, I, I hope it's helping people. And that was really bad. But <laughs> you will you affirm that it was very yes, bad? Yes, I will. Yes. Love to affirm I'm, that for you. You know, my backup career is that. So if this doesn't work, you know. Well, thank heavens it's working yeah, so we're far. Very skinny around here. But anyhow, I want to talk about some investing apps because uh, this is the advent brought on by millennials. And we heard about the GameStop. Mm-hmm. Sque- short squeeze, right. and it was brought on by Robin Hood. But I wanted to talk about different ones that people are using. That I see people using, and there's three of them. And I just want to bring everybody's attention because we like to be right now relevant, talking about current money events. And so one of them is Bean Stocks. So B E A N S T O X dot com. What, what are you What are you laughing about? That's catchy. So beanstocks dot com is really neat way that has been brought on by I, I, I believe it's one of the people that's on Sharks. Shark Tank, no. and they've kind of invested in that. They're kind of the, they're kind of the the energy behind it, yeah. and it's really bringing, it's trying to introduce investing to the masses because the truth is, only two in ten Americans really have significant exposure to the stock market. So when the market goes up, that's not affecting 
a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And particularly uh, young people as they're getting started out, you know, a lot of people, the reason a lot of people show up at retirement with no money is because they didn't know this or they didn't prioritize it until way too late. So the earlier we can get people investing because time matters most, you know, consistency is most important and then time yeah. Being able to have that long-term exposure is really important. So when you got 30 and 40 years ahead of you, it's great. And bean stocks is really a way to introduce people to investing in a way that is bite-sized and with some education. And I like that. Mm -hmm. And so I've checked it out. I like it. So I'm mentioning it. Another one is Robinhood, mm -hmm. Robinhood.com. And Robinhood is an app. You can download it on your phone, carry on a mobile app, and it allows you to invest in stocks. And they were the first ones to allow you to buy and sell stocks for free. It's a big deal. No trading fee. Yeah. Big deal. They had, and it became such a big deal, they actually forced all the, the mm -hmm. big companies, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Fidelity, and all them yes. had to follow because they saw, hey, we're going to lose all this business. We're all thankful for that. And then Acorns. <laughs> Acorns allows you to buy pieces of stocks. Mm -hmm. And they kind of introduced that and subsequently have forced Schwab and Fidelity to offer stock slices mm -hmm. to where if you don't have enough money to buy a whole share of Apple stock, which is trading for about $123.64 as we record this, you can buy a share of that, a slice of it for five bucks. Hmm. Everybody's got five bucks. And so I really wanted to bring these three up to you. And we're having listening to the show notes. If you're on YouTube and watching, I hope you hit the like and subscribe button there. But I encourage you to check them out. Beanstocks.com, Robinhood.com, Acorns.com. And hey, you can download all of them. It's free. There's no cost. Move a little money in there and start learning. Start your journey towards investing in stocks and different mutual funds. I think you'll be so glad you did. And that's it for today's current money events section. Perfect. Out. <laughs> you're right. mocking me. How do we keep going? I feel like you're thing. mocking me. I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm here with you. <laughs> We're in it together. Yikes. Okay, our success story this week comes from Elizabeth, and she and her husband um, are members of the Fully Funded Life. So yes. you heard about it before. Um I guess after you sang. Check it out, fullyfunded.life. <laughs> yes. Um, you can get a special offer if you go to fullyfunded.life slash MMT. And that stands for Monday Money, Money Tip. Tip. Yep. Yep, that's great. Um, so they said after her coaching session, she wrote in to say, just wanted to drop a note saying thank you for your time, as well as Joe's this past week. I really appreciate this one-on-one -on -one interaction available through this program. So one of our big things that we offer is coaching. So you can sign up for coaching appointments. And I've been sneaking in on some of the coaching you appointments. You surprise people so people, much like when you do it. So it's great. Um, so she said, we are already beginning to talk more about finances and budgeting. Um, more than we ever have before, and praise the Lord. And we prayed that our septic wouldn't cost the earth to repair, and the repair came in at $400. We can cover that without having to dip into credit cards. My next step is to put all credit cards in the gun safe and begin the journey to debt freedom. Thanks again. <laughs> I love it. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, several things stand out to me. Number one is they are members of Fully Funded Life, and a lot of couples are showing up together yeah. in the coaching, and we love that mm -hmm. because that creates unity. We always say if we coach one member of a couple, two visions could form, which could create division. Uh, the second thing that I love is that she's saying how much uh, you know she had a surprise expense, which we're talking about that very thing in this episode. Mm -hmm. And because they had savings, 400 bucks isn't going to make them go into debt. Mm -hmm. And- the, a statistic that was released by the Federal Reserve right before the pandemic, even December of 2019, was that if faced with an unexpected expense of $400, 40% of Americans could not pay money for it. Yeah. So that's what this is all about, is really, really helping people be able to accommodate challenges. And I challenge them, get more than one quote. Don't take the first person. You know, Get a quote and make your George Washington scream. If you make your George Washington scream... Ben Franklin will come home and stay. Ooh. And that's something I just came up with. That. But the other thing that I saw is she said, we can cover that without having to dip into credit cards and not one, but two exclamation points. Mm -hmm. So you can see the energy. But the next step is put all the credit cards in the gun safe, <laughs> right? And then I would say, don't know the combination of the gun safe. That'd be really important. Uh, but here's what I know is she's saying, I'm putting an obstacle between me and yeah. The thing that is enabling my impulsiveness. As we say all the time around here, uh, you know, and I'm going to get this bad, bad boy card from Dave Ramsey again. He's going to write me and tell me, you know, I, stop saying that. I'm probably, but, you know, 
Credit cards are not the problem. Yeah. It is the misuse of them and the impulsiveness they enable. Mm -hmm. I had to live without a credit card for six years. And I did that successfully. But by the time I went back and got a credit card, I had changed my yeah. behavior. Your habits have now, changed. Now, yeah. do you get points and miles for yours? Oh, yeah. I get points and miles for mine. For, as an organization, we get points and miles for that. And we mm -hmm. hand it out in gift cards and cash at Christmas. And we love it. I haven't heard anybody no. complain about that. <laughs> and so it's great. I love that. So... So they're beginning the journey to debt freedom, and that's wonderful. Yep. And that's what it's all about is, is, is Fully Funded Life was created to be courses for knowledge, challenges for getting really good at one thing really fast, like a budgeting or saving money, and then coaching. That one-on-one -on -one interaction with world-class coaches, really humans that mm -hmm. you can trust that aren't going to sell you anything, and community so we celebrate your success. Thanks for taking the time to write in, Elizabeth. We're fired up for you. All right. Awesome. Okay. So for our question for today, it says, have you ever had any surprise expenses that blew up your budget? Well, we can't eliminate surprise expenses from showing up, but we can prepare for them financially so they don't destroy your budget. In today's episode of the podcast, we're going to be talking about five steps you can take to prevent surprise expenses from blindsiding you and derailing you on your way to your fully funded life. That's awesome. And, and we're going to help you with that. And again, this is not you know, how to save for known upcoming expenses, although it is important. We're going to talk about ways to keep these surprise expenses from blowing you up, like when you didn't really plan for them totally, mm -hmm. and how to make sure you can get there. And so the very first thing is what? Yes. So number one is prioritize achieving rung number two within 60 days or less. Right. So this is really important. So rung number two is saving one month's worth of expenses. So whatever it is that makes your household run for one month, that amount, and getting there within 60 days. You know, in the book of Nehemiah, they built the wall around the city in 52 days. And I like to say if they could build a wall around a city in 52 days, hey, you, you can build a wall of savings around your household. Now, is it going to take energy and effort? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it going to take needing some security? If you read the book of Nehemiah, they, they needed swords and their hands on them while they worked because yeah. the enemy wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, what can you sell? What type of bonus are you getting? A stimulus payment. It's tax refund season closing out. Most people who get one have already gotten one by now. But hey, you're, maybe you'll get one next year. But I'm just saying, what could you do to build up one month's worth of savings right now? Because if you have that, then any surprise expense that shows up that you could have known about but you forgot or mm -hmm. it's truly a surprise, you'll be able to keep cash money for it and avoid future new debt. And the first step, Mary Hunt is a great Christian author, wrote a book called Debt Proof Living, mm -hmm. subsequent book called Debt Proof Marriage. She, she wrote this. She said, saved money prevents future debt. Hmm. That's and good. that's really what we're talking about here in number one is to prioritize achieving Rung number two, which is to save one month's worth of expenses, do it in less than 60 days. It is that urgent. I'm telling you, if you don't do it, if you don't make it urgent, life's going to happen. It's going to happen again. It's going to cost you money. You're not on money saved. You're going to be doing debt again. Prioritize that. You won't regret it. Yeah. I think when you ask people, they would always say, yes, I know surprise expenses have happened. Or you would ask somebody and they would they could give you a list of the surprise expenses that have happened to them. Yes. But when you go back and ask a follow-up question of are you saving for those or have you saved for those? Do you have that buffer? Do you have that margin? The majority of people I feel like would say no. You don't even need to ask the question because yeah. you can see it in their tone yeah. and in their facial expressions when they're sharing it. Mm -hmm. If they're sharing like this happened, this happened, oh, this happened, you yeah. know they didn't. Right. But if they're like, hey, this happened, this happened, and you know what? We were able to pay money. They will tell you. We were yeah. able to pay money for it. Yeah. It's awesome. So we all know the first part, but yeah, there's a there's a misconnect, a disconnect from the second part. So we're trying to connect the pieces today. Yes. All right. Number two. Number two is save for known upcoming non-monthly expenses every paycheck. So I had to include this. This is the episode about saving for known upcoming expenses where you really take these known upcoming non-monthly expenses Christmas, vacation, property taxes, annual insurance premiums, and save for them every paycheck. Because, this is the big issue, too many of us call surprise expenses, they're, they're actually unsurprising. <laughs> when I hear, did anybody have a surprise expense this month? They're like, yes, I had to replace my tires. <laughs> Time out. Every time you drive the car, this may shock somebody as they drive. <laughs> um, every time you drive the car, Unless your tires are made of metal only, rubber wears off of them. 
It just is that shocking to you? Mm -hmm. no, like no, every time, I know some tires yeah. are eighty thousand mile tires. If you're driving an SUV, if you make it fifty thousand miles, you're you're doing great. <laughs> but here's the deal: every time, so it shouldn't be a surprise. So think about it: are brakes really a surprise expense? As I came back here to record this from lunch, uh, my bride was backing out the Yukon, and I heard that terrible sound, the screech that tells me the little <laughs> sensors are saying, yeah. "Hey, it's time to get the brake pads updated." So I told her, I waved her down. I said, did you hear that? Hey, let's, let's set up an appointment. It's not a surprise, yeah. but they are surprised if you haven't saved for them. Mm -hmm. So, that, but they're really known upcoming non-monthly expenses. The same goes for medical bills. We should at least save up the deductible for our insurance. Mm -hmm. Is your deductible $5,000? You better have $5,000 saved. Because I'm telling you right now, if you sneeze, and accidentally like throw it your back and end up in the emergency room and people have thrown it at their back sneezing. Oh, yes. Let me tell you, that's five grand out the door, right? Same, so, so that's really important. So what about an appliance breaking down? We know stuff breaks down. So one of the things that saving for cues every single paycheck helps us do is be prepared for these, what I call unsurprising surprise expenses. So putting a line item in your budget saying, something's going to break and calling it an item because it's going to happen. Yeah. That will help you greatly in avoiding these, these surprise expenses that can really blow up your budget. Yeah. And it makes it a lot easier when you're saving for them every paycheck. So to go and replace a refrigerator and pay all of it at once Oof. is going to cost a lot of that money. That is no fun. Know? Or to replace your brakes or tires or whatever it is. But if you're saving every paycheck, it's cutting that expense down each time and making it a lot more doable. It's like a bite size where you're able to it save is. for it's it every It is. It's just bite month. size. And I, I would just say to everybody listening... You have If you have purchased a home with home mortgage and it has the escrow in there for your taxes and insurance, how much of a blessing is it that when that insurance bill shows up, that property tax bill shows up, it's just paid mm -hmm. by the mortgage company, but they're using your money. <laughs> what have they done? They've taken your annual insurance, your annual taxes, and divided it by 12. You can do the same thing for these expenses. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody what the third thing is that will keep these expenses, these surprise expenses from destroying your budget. Yes. Number three is include a line item in every budget called surprise expenses. Yes. So I love this. I put a line item in my budget every month that's called surprise unexpected expenses because putting money into this category is a pretty, is a pretty good bet because chances are pretty good. Something's going to pop up. You didn't remember. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have kids, especially when they're in school, especially when you're married and your spouse forgets. You never forget. I know you never forget, but your spouse might forget. And your kids are going to come home with another fundraiser, right? And if you have great months that don't demand it, well, what can you do with it? Build it on up. Build it on up savings, <laughs> which is great and makes you get fired up. So I would really encourage you in your budget, hey, listener, you do have a budget, don't you? Right? You do? Okay, that's great. Um, for those of you who changed the channel, you're not listening anymore. But if you did happen to, <laughs> I would really encourage you, hey, if you want to become great at budgeting, sign up for our next budget challenge that we launch or check out Fully Funded Life because that's what, I mean, we really, you need a budget to maximize every dollar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the fourth thing we can do to keep surprise expenses from blowing up our budget? Yes, so number four is maintain, maintain, maintain. So maintain, maintain, maintain. Maintain what? What's that mean? Maintain. It means regular maintenance. So maybe you're doing regular maintenance on things. So for example, or for instance, I'm trying to mix those words together. <laughs> um, a heat pump, furnace, central air system. Yeah, so. think about this. Like if you, whatever you use to heat and cool your house. Yeah. It might be a central air. It might be an air conditioner. It might be a furnace. It might be a heat pump. But listen, annual service and maintenance contracts exist for a reason. <laughs> Filter changes. That you little know, that button that so flashes. Huge. You know, when you hear this <laughs> yeah. weird sound in your house, every now and then, you know, I would hear these sounds like this is like a real whirring sound. And I realized, hey, the filters haven't been changed in three years <laughs> and the thing can hardly get air. Yeah. And that makes it inefficient, could damage it. So I just set up a reminder on my phone mm -hmm. that every quarter to change the air filters. And I buy them on Amazon and they sit in stacks. I buy a year's worth so that I don't sit there and have a thing saying, I don't have filters. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. So it pops up. Uh, regular maintenance of your lawnmower and other powered equipment. Yep. I'm telling you right now, 
I'm the worst at this, especially small engines with ethanol. I mean, there's things you can do to maintain this stuff. Yeah. Add sea foam. Uh, which is a type of fuel additive or uh, stable or one of those things that helps your fuel stabilize ethanol. Uh, make sure that you run an engine, especially small engines, once a month. Just yeah. start it. Especially um, in the wintertime. Especially in the wintertime. Yeah. Those things you put away for seasons. Yep. Uh, other powered equipment. Regular maintenance on your vehicles. It's amazing how many people myself included, will skip oil changes for months and months past when it's supposed to. Yeah. And what I love about my Honda, now I love my Honda, it doesn't, it's not a set number of months or miles, it's a percentage. Mm -hmm. And it's synthetic and it's more pricey when I go in. But I will tell you, because it starts flashing, I immediately schedule the service. Yeah. And so I just really encourage you, maintain stuff because while this may come as a surprise to some of you, if you maintain your stuff, it will last longer. Like pick, Megan's having to recover from the shock over here. <laughs> and, and it keeps it from breaking down the bigger breakdowns yeah. and, and from requiring costly repairs, which could really jeopardize your budget. So I just really want to encourage you to think about all the things you have that have small engines, that have engines, that drive around, your house, your valuable assets. Are you doing the things necessary to truly maintain them? Mm -hmm. And what I found is, and you've seen this, that when people are living paycheck to paycheck, they start letting that stuff slide because mm -hmm. they can get away with it. I can get away without an oil change this month. I can get away without getting tires one more month. And then before you know it, you blink mm -hmm. and it's been two years yeah. and then bad things happen. Yeah. And so I just really encourage you maintain, maintain, maintain. It'll really help you avoid surprise expenses. And so what's the fifth and final one that we wanted to share of the five yes. ways to keep surprise expenses from blowing up your budget? Yep. So the next one is purchase quality stuff. Yes. So quality stuff. I like that word stuff. stuff. Whatever you buy, buy quality stuff. Now, I know stuff isn't the exact most technical term. But it's the best word to describe all the things you'll purchase during your lifetime. So can I tell story time? Yes, story time. Man, I wish I had like some nice little quiet music to play in the background. Maybe they <laughs> will in the post-production editing. Um, but here's what I would just say. Quiet music. Aunt Law's Lawn Boy. So my, my great aunt was, uh, her name was Eleanor. Eleanor was an amazing woman. Uh, she got married and unfortunately her husband was in World War II and got caught behind enemy lines and perished one year into their marriage. And uh, she never had children. And so my mother was her only niece. So she was also her favorite niece. And she loved my me and my five brothers, the six single boys, like we were her own. Like she was almost more of a grandmother to us than my grandmother because my grandmother was uh, a missionary and was gone a lot, mm -hmm. but Aunt Law was there and we would go visit her and her lawn was always mowed immaculately. Like she had paved driveway. I mean, it was awesome to ride your bike on and everything, but she had a lawn boy. This lawn boy was a type of lawn mower that was the highest, I mean, an enormous amount of money back then. Mm -hmm. And it started every poll, she maintained it, even when she finally said, I'm not gonna mow my lawns anymore, I'm gonna hand that off as she became elderly. It got donated to our family and that lawn boy, we could not kill it. It just kept running. And, and it just lasted forever, why? Because she purchased a quality item. And then here's the next story. This is the dramatic story time. I found myself every year at Walmart buying the cheapest lawn mower there. Almost every year. Why are you going to Walmart? Because it was J-U-N-K, but it was cheap. It's what I could afford. I was broke. And so it always, I would always settle on the junk. And I'm just here to tell you right now, uh, it was junk, the J-U-N-K. It would start good. The first it would mow good. <laughs> but I'm telling you, especially with the advent of ethanol, I've got one sitting in my, in my barn right now that I bought at my last house. And when we moved to our house, when Jenny and I built our forever home, we looked at each other and said, we committed and said, if we couldn't do something with quality materials or products and we couldn't finish it completely, we would just wait until we could do so with quality and cash, of course. We're not going to finance it. And so I remember how I, I bought a lawnmower and I, I wanted to buy a lawnmower. It's fancy. And I was out, I was literally, I was bush hogging my lawn. <laughs> and, then, and then I decided I was going to push mow it. 
with my junk push mower. And my neighbor saw it and saw us trying to push mow two acres. No, I'm not I joking. Say, you have a lot of- In the middle of the South Carolina summer sun in the fifth season known as Inferno. And he came over, my neighbor did, and he's like, Joe, I cannot stand to see this any longer. I, you're, go, you're going, I'm going to see you dead over here of heat stroke. Please borrow my zero turn, fancy schmancy, unbelievable lawnmower. <laughs> And you were never the same. And I told him, no, I couldn't do that. Okay. <laughs> so I borrowed it. And actually, I'd always wanted a ZTR. Oh. I was looking at a John Deere one. It's but I never drove one. So I was worried about, like, would I crash it? <laughs> and I quickly fell in love with it. And I remember my bride looking at me and saying, hey, buying this lawnmower, is it going to prevent our ability to retire? I said, no. Is it going to prevent our ability to help our kids through college? No. Is it... Why are we not buying it? I said, I have actually, I have no idea why. <laughs> and I left that day and went and bought my John Deere mower. And let me tell you, it has started every time I've turned the key. It is five years old. It mows three acres every time I mow at least once a week. It's my favorite time of the week. I mow it eight and a half miles an hour. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and, and so I would just tell everybody, buy quality stuff. I mean, you and Jordan, he wanted to buy a boat. He did. And so you started looking into this. You started saving for it. You found a boat. Mm -hmm. Did he buy a junk boat? No. 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 He probably would have been okay with like a little bit more of a junker for our first boat. Just so that like, you know, it's going to get dinged up. You're going to hit the docks, whatever. Um, you are? Well, maybe. Okay. Uh, not when I'm driving. <laughs> I'm a fantastic driver. Um, but... I was like, oh no! We're so we're gonna buy so, fancy. So fancy. you so you bought a nice boat. We bought a nice boat. And yes. does it start when you put it in the water? It does. And does he maintain it? Do you guys maintain it? You wipe it down. He maintains and it. Yeah. Does it's, he winterize it? No, we don't winterize it because well, it's a jet boat, so it's a little okay. bit different. So we don't have to necessarily, but we just have to run it. So we've gone out a couple of days. Um, you know, during the winter, in the cold weather and ran it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, we live in South Carolina. So like one yeah. day in January, it's like 75. And Fantastic. so, you know, it's great. So we can run it the whole winter, which is really that nice. That was that day I was asking you to get that, that, no, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, have no I was idea. busy that but, day. <laughs> but maintain, maintain your stuff. And it's a lot easier to maintain quality stuff. Yes. I guess is how I'd wrap it up. Yes. So that's the five things you can do to eliminate surprise expenses from showing up. Prioritize having that rung two savings at a minimum, one month's worth of savings. Save for your known upcoming non-monthly expenses every paycheck. It's much easier to do that. Include a line item in your budget called surprise expenses. Maintain your stuff. And it's a lot easier when it's that fifth thing, purchase quality stuff. So... Tell everybody what the verse of the episode is, our or the quote. quote. Our quote for today is, it's not your salary that makes you rich, it's your spending habits. Yes. Mm. That's a good line. It's That's not your salary line. that makes you rich, it's your spending habits. And of course, a better salary helps you improve those odds. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, I thought I was, my spending habits, we always think about, we spend too much. But I realized my spending habits of buying junk mm. was actually costing me more on the back end. Yeah. And so I chose to buy quality. So think about your spending habits, not just as in you're spending too much on dumb stuff, mm -hmm. but hey, can you spend on better stuff so that it lasts you longer? Really important. And so tell everybody what we're going to talk about in episode number 144. Yes. So our next episode, we're going to talk about how to teach your kids about budgeting. Yeah. So if you've ever wondered if you have kids and they might be getting to that age where they need to start budgeting or maybe they're younger and you just want to prepare, this would be a great episode. We're going to break it down for you. hundred yep. percent. And if you like today's episode, please get this podcast so other people could benefit. You can do by rating the podcast, leaving a review. You can share it with your friends and your family on your social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, Click that subscribe button. That little bell will notify you every time a new episode's released. Of course, leave a comment. Do you agree? Disagree? Have anything to add to the conversation? We welcome your feedback. We're here to serve you with right now relevant content every single Monday with the Monday Money Tip Podcast. We'll see you next Monday. It's going to be unbelievable. It's going to be April. <laughs> Spring ought to be in all of our areas, and we're fired up about that. Oh, yeah. Peace. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.